Welcome to Fundamentals of Operating Systems. This is the course introduction and we'll explain how the course is structured and what you need to know to begin this course. I'm Dr. Tim R. Norton. I'll be your instructor. What is this course all about? In this course, we're going to talk about the fundamentals within an operating system. And not a specific operating system, but any operating system that you're likely to run across. And we'll talk about the interrelationships between those functions and how they're different in different operating systems. This course has been designed to follow a companion textbook, Modern Operating Systems by Andrew S. Tannenbaum. So if you would like more information about the, informa about the topics we cover in this course, you can either follow along with the Tannenbaum book or use it as a reference afterward to gain information about specific questions or topics that you may have in addition to asking me questions. What are the objectives of the course? In this course, we will explain the overall objectives and structure of any modern operating system. This is not geared towards a specific operating system, but things that you will see in any of the modern operating systems today. We will identify the differences and similarities between these different operating systems. Why are some operating systems structured one way and why are other operating systems structured a different way? We'll describe the functions within an operating system, how these functions work, and how they're implemented in different types of operating systems. We'll list what causes an operating, many operating system errors and crashes. We'll use more advanced operating system features to improve productivity. And we'll understand how you choose which operating system approaches best to suit the individual situations. What is it that your application needs and how can you look at the right operating system to make that choice? What are the prerequisites for this course? Well, since this is a fundamentals course, we really just need an understanding of the general computer use. It helps if you're familiar with using more than one type of computer, but at least be familiar with starting an application, using files, etc. just general computer usage. We also would like a basic exposure to computers connected on a network. This is not a requirement, but it will certainly help because in today's modern operating systems, most systems are connected over a network, and that functionality has become very ingrained in current operating systems. And some knowledge of programming would be, will be very helpful. It's not, again, not required, but understanding how to write a program, what it means to write programs, how to access hardware or make calls to an, app, uh, to an operating system function will be very helpful as we go through this, uh, this course. What are the topics? Well, first we'll talk about an introduction to operating systems at the very basic level. And this will go over some of the very, very basic concepts and get you familiar with what an operating system is in general. And then we'll look at the concepts within an operating system. What are the key things that are included in all operating systems? And then the structure of an operating system and how it differs, differs between different operating systems that you might run across. We'll talk about threads and processes. These are the constructs within an operating system that allows it to actually run programs. How are these similar? How are these different? We'll look at interprocess communication. How does an operating system facilitate communication from one program to another? Scheduling. When an operating system needs to run a program, it can certainly start it and run it. But what happens when a user wants to run multiple programs? The operating system has to schedule those, has to run them, figure out which one to run next, etc. So we'll talk about the different techniques and the different philosophies behind different operating systems' approaches to scheduling. We'll talk about deadlocks. These are the errors or problems that cause machines to seem to quit working, but not fail completely. 
Memory management. How does the operating system manage that physical memory so that e every application can use what it needs without impacting what other applications al also need? Input and output. There's not much use for a computer if you can't get data into it and data out. So the operating system manages that input output on many different levels and we'll talk about how and what techniques are used. File systems. The operating system maintains that permanent storage area and provides the application that view of how to keep data and how to use files to be able to exchange data or to save data or to read data. Multi multimedia operating systems. These are becoming more and more common as we see features and functions added to normal laptop and desktop operating systems to support things like video and audio. Multiple processor systems. So each operating system has to decide whether it's going to support one or more processors and what are the problems and the implications when an operating system design wants to provide support for multiple processors, especially today as more and more systems, including laptops, have two or four or even more processors. <coughs> operating system security. Now this is a very large topic, but we'll touch on that and look at some of the areas as to what is required within the operating system itself to facilitate and make security more important and easier to implement across a computing environment. And then we'll take a quick look at the examples of a couple of our operating system architectures. Quizzes will be found throughout this course, so as we get to a quiz, we'll ask you to stop the video and you can answer the quiz at your leisure, and then we'll go through the answers one by one with some comments. There's a question box for every um, module, so if you have questions, Please feel free to enter the questions and send them to me. Okay, are you ready for the fundamentals of operating systems? Let's get started.